Hello everyone, this is your host Valdeth, and welcome to my Minecraft 1.5 Redstone tutorial series. Yes, I hope uh, to make this for the total noob. You don't know anything about Redstone whatsoever, this is the place for you. But that's not to say there's not something here for everyone. If you're a Redstone veteran, maybe I'll cover some topics that you didn't necessarily know too much about. But uh, I plan on structuring this in a very logical and orderly fashion. And the first three lessons are going to be kind of the, the main core part of the whole series. I plan on having uh, those main three, a uh, few extra, going into some more medium necessities that everyone kind of needs to know about. Clocks and pistons and flip-flops and latches and all that. And then there'll have to be a couple more advanced lessons for some of the more advanced type circuits, if you guys want to see that. But uh, these first three lessons, I'm going to consider the core. And the first one up today, I just destroyed the sign, is lesson one, redstone dust and basic I.O. Not I.P., I.O. What do I mean by I.O.? I mean input and output. All right, let's get started. First thing we're going to talk about are the basic properties of redstone dust. It spawns as ore at Y levels 16 and below at the diamond level. You can mine it with iron or greater pickaxes. Uh, when you mine it with a pickaxe, you'll normally harvest four to six dust. But if you use a fortune enchantment up to the higher levels of fortune, fortune three, you can get up to eight. Now, if you were to get the ore with silk touch, you could go ahead and smelt it but you only get one dust, so there's no reason to do that. You always want to mine it and use fortune. And then now you can take that dust and craft it in a nine by nine, you, nine dust, crafting into a block. This redstone block does lots of cool stuff. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. Now, basics of IO, what is that? Input and output. All redstone circuits have three main components. They have a power component, which is generally called your input, something that generates redstone power, redstone signal. You have your transmission component, the circuit, the thing that really takes the signal from A to B. And then the output of the circuit. Generally this is called a mechanism, but it could just be a signal as well. In this case we'll use a lamp. So we're going to have power generated by this block of redstone, crafted by nine redstone dust, creates redstone power. And we're going to light up this lamp, just like this, a basic circuit. This guy generating power, sending it to this piece of dust, which is sending it over here to this lamp as a redstone wire. Now we'll get into the details of what's powering what and how it's all happening a little, a little later. This is what's more important to understand, input devices. So redstone power, it normally comes from player input devices like pressure plates, buttons, a lever, turn on and off, trap chest, see how it light, lights up there, trip wire, redstone signal coming out of each trip wire, but power can also come from some constant sources. We already talked about the block of redstone constantly generating power and the redstone torch, a very, very specific redstone item that's been very important for a very long time. We'll talk about him more in detail in the next episode. Now, power can also come from some other blocks depending on certain conditions. So right here, we've got a detector rail. When a minecart goes over it, powers it. It also powers this booster track here as well. Oh, make it all the way? Is it going to make it? Nope. Until I push it. And it stays on there while the minecart is there. Very cool. Then we also have the day-night sensor, a new block with a redstone update that uh, tells us when it's day. It actually has to do with signal strength and all that good stuff, but for now, just demonstrate. Is it 10,000, something like that? Nighttime. And... The light goes off. Now 
Now, redstone power gen generally, naturally, can be carried 15 blocks by redstone dust. This is generating a signal. The power level or the signal strength goes down, as you can see, by the dimming of the color of the wire. As you can see, it's getting darker and darker. These little sprites saying it's still got power. I can still pull power out of here using this repeater, but here at 15, or past 15, this is 16, no longer can I power anything. And this signal strength concept is actually going to be very important for a lot of circuits and other neat little features. The light sensor uses a uh, signal strength capability, but we'll talk more about that later. And the second part of the circuit, transmission, you don't actually need dust for transmission. As you can see, redstone block will transmit power directly next to it. I can power this block with the switch, transmit power next to it. And then the torch can power things next to it and above it without dust, no dust necessary. You can see it doesn't power the block under here. Finally, no circuit is complete without a third piece. We got input, we got transmission, we need mechanisms, we need outputs. And we got a lot of common outputs in Minecraft here. We got the light, doors respond to redstone, pistons of the sticky and non-sticky variety, note blocks, uh, dispensers, droppers, Trap doors, fence gates, powered rails, repeaters, and comparators. And there's also some fun ones, you know. TNT, output mechanism. So, what can you do with these basic input output concepts? So some practical examples. Everyone should be using protected doorways. Some monsters don't get in, and a button on the outside to get in. On the inside of your houses, you can have pressure plates, because you don't need to actually have an action and right-click something when you just want to walk outside. Everyone should have this. The input device powers this redstone block, this block here, or in this pressure plate case, it powers the block the pressure plate's on. The block right here is the block that this is standing on, so this powers that block, and the door opens. We'll talk more about block power and powering blocks in a later episode, episode 3. So some other examples you can have automatic lights with that day-night sensor. It came nighttime, lights come on. Comes daytime, lights go off. Let's show that again. This is an inverter. We'll see this later. Well, we'll see uh, this thing next episode. All right, so some of the advanced topics that we've kind of hinted at as we've talked about these basic things are the differences between redstone dust, dots, and wires. So this is a redstone dust dot. Can power, it'll power all the blocks around it and it actually powers the block it's in as well and on top of. We'll talk about that later. But a wire you can see is more directional. This is considered like a wire junction but these pieces here these three are wires and they are only sending the power into this block not powering this adjacent block like this dust can do. But it's both just dust. So there's that also, an advanced topic is the differences between the torch and the block of redstone. You can see when the torch is placed on top of something like this, it doesn't power that block, but it'll power the one above it. If it's placed against a wall, it'll power above it and below it, but not the block it's attached to. But the redstone block will always power all the ones around it. Hmm. But we'll talk more about all those properties and the neat things about the torch next lesson. Hope you guys learned something, and stay tuned!